1460 KOHU. We welcome you as well. If you're listening online, gohermiston.com and mixler.com forward slash 1360 KOHU. The web stream is powered by Blue Mountain Networks. That is internet at the speed of life. Approaching kickoff at 5 o'clock this evening, the noise parade was quite noisy. If you go to the KOHU KQFM Facebook page, I actually did my best Rose Parade hosting abilities from high atop the stadium down onto Highland Avenue and uh, shot some video for you of that so you can check that out. It is just you and me and the radio mix three tonight. Sonny was uh, down visiting his uh, son in Nevada, did not make it back. So we will be uh, talking. Well, I'll be talking. You'll be listening. Maybe you'll talk back. I won't be able to hear you. Right now, what we're going to hear is the band with the national anthem as we approach kickoff tonight at Hermiston. So that was uh, obviously not the band, that was choir and uh, Mr. Thacker presenting uh, the national anthem here on what has been a little bit of a warm evening, at least for the way the last couple of days have gone here in Hermiston, but uh, it does still feel very much like fall is just hours away from falling upon us. 63 right now, clear above head off to the north, there is some cloud cover, not really a ton of wind to speak of, a touch coming out of the uh, south and a little bit from the west here this evening, but it won't be anything very impactful. The captains and here at Hermiston for homecoming, the honorary captains about ready to walk out to midfield for the coin toss. Let's get down to what we are talking about here tonight. We are talking about a game that is big for a lot of different reasons, not the least of which is this is two of the four 3A teams out of the Mid-Columbia Conference. The visiting Southridge Suns, as led by head coach Matt Johnson in his third year in the program, are 0-3. They have... Uh, 
come off of a, a tough loss against Kamayakin last week at Lampson Stadium, 50 to 14, and have been giving up a lot of uh, points. They come in against what is currently, by statistics, the number one producing offense in the Mid-Columbia Conference with yardage, led by Isaac Corey, who is the number one quarterback by yardage in the conference through three weeks of the season. Hermiston's two and one. They got the win last week at Walla Walla, one of the other 3A teams. Hermiston, Walla Walla, and Southridge all know that they are chasing Kennewick, number 10 in the WIAA's 3A RPI, and 3-0. and They are in their huge rivalry matchup about to kick off up at Lampson Stadium under the lights against the Kamayak and Braves. But really, when you break down the games, this game just carries that much more weight because it's two with 3A teams. And Kamaikin and Kennewick, that's 3A and 4A. So, why does that matter? Because of the four 3A teams, two of them will make the WIAA's round of 32 and go to the state playoffs. The other two will play in that Week 10 crossover game, and that's it. That's the end of the season. That is where Hermiston has found themselves each of the previous four seasons, that it's been a possibility since they joined the Mid-Columbia Conference. Right now, they are in a position to put themselves into the driver's seat if they can come away with the victory and keep the South Southridge Suns winless. There are some nerves on both sides of the field for sure. For Southridge, a little bit of the nerves is 0-3 and, and things are getting a little bit tense. How do they start getting stops on the defensive side of the ball? Matt Johnson, when talking to him this week and talking about play calling, he said, I kind of don't even want to admit I'm the defensive coordinator right now. We've got to find some ways to get some stops. On the Hermiston side of things, David Faitete has been away for a couple of days this week attending to family matters, so he has missed a couple of days of practice. Talking to him tonight, definitely a little bit more nervy, definitely a little bit more tense, and he admitted, he said, I just don't feel ready because I haven't been here for a couple of days. Hermiston is going to start off with the ball offensively as uh, the Southridge Suns are out to kick things off and Jackson Williams is about to be handed the ball. Jaime Ramirez Ortega to the right, Justice Council to the left will wait to return the kick. Hermiston attacking right to left, the home uniforms, all black uniforms with gold numerals, purple trim, and the white helmets. Southridge in all white attire with a blue numeral trimmed in yellow. Williams, a right-footed kicker, will put his foot to the ball. A squib rolling down right side and a sliding play. It rolls out of the hands of Connell. And then Hermiston is able to get on it anyways at the 29-yard line. That is where they will start. And we take a look at this offense that is putting up some eye-popping numbers for the MCC. The starting lineup is brought to you by Rogers Toyota. There's a change on the offensive line. At right tackle tonight, CU Sepeni, the 6'1", 270-pound senior who missed last Last week serving the suspension because the ejection against Richland he will bump out to right tackle and Seth Reeve the sophomore who started in his place last week at right guard will be at right guard again they are without Angel Ordaz Garcia who has started the first three games at right tackle first down and 10 Isaac Corey in the shotgun fakes to Ben Larson straight drop a lot of time in the pocket deep ball down the right side into coverage show hot it gets tipped and then tipped off of his hands incomplete Jackson Williams got beat by Shohanik's speed, but he was able to get his hand on it, and so he tipped it away. So, CU Sepenny at right tackle, Seth Reeve at right guard, no changes on the other side of the line. Weth Leathers, the uh, senior at center, Hunter Allen, the junior at left guard, and Elijah Robinson, the senior at left tackle. Handoff, this is Ben Larson running up the middle, and Larson, who came into the game with 300 yards rushing, will add about three to that tally. Number three in the Mid-Columbia Conference on the ground. He had his breakout week last week against Walla Walla. 15 carries, 165 yards, and all three of his touchdowns this season came last week at Burleski Stadium. 
Half minute in, Hermiston has a third down and seven from the 33. Isaac Corey will roll to the left looking to throw. The quarterback pumps, sets up. Now he'll pull it down and shove out of bounds. Just about the 35 yard line, not nearly enough for a first down. With a fourth down and four facing Hermiston. An early decision for the head coach, David Faitete, and his offensive coordinator, Mike Mosier. The offense is right now on the field with this fourth and four from their own 35. Isaac Corey, the junior quarterback, 6'2", 205 pounds. That rush goes for four yards for Isaac, excuse me, for two yards for Isaac, and a fourth down and four facing him. Corey, 972 yards passing. Coming in, he will look to throw in this fourth down. Time lobs it over the top. Dale Krebs slipped and is not able to regain his footing. Incomplete. Turnover on downs, and Hermiston's going to give Southridge very good field position. 10.34 on the clock here in the opening quarter, and Southridge is going to start on Hermiston's 35-yard line. The wing T. You get to taste it once a year in the Mid-Columbia Conference, at least in league play. And the Southridge Suns are going to run it out with quarterback Austin Geyer, his second year at the helm of this uh, position. The quarterback will go under center, wing back to the left, two backs behind him on first down and 10. Now they will shift, shifting in the tight end, Gavin Allen, he's out to the right side. And there are whistles at a pause before the start of this play. No flags on the ground. It appears to just be a reset of things. And so they'll reset the ball, first down and 10. Austin Geyer took over last year after week one when Max Martin, who was slated to be the quarterback for that tremendous Southridge team, had their best football season in years and years and years. But they lost Martin in week one against Richland. So Geyer came in there. But you're really the game manager, quote unquote, as the wing T quarterback. We got another pause. And Kellen Young is being sent off the field. Apparently his knee pads were a little bit too high. So Landon Shilhanek will replace him at the Superman position. Finally, a first down and 10 from the 35. Dive play up the middle. David Sinyak, who is the leading rusher for this team, 120, now nine yards on the year. That was his 27th carry. Has gotten in the end zone once. Gains three, down to the 32. It's on the right hash mark. Sinyak is gonna be directly behind Geyer. Offset to the right is Michael Ingersoll. And wide left, Coven Burke at a split end position. The other wing back is to the right. Hand off, and Cliff Sandberg will break through across the 30, pulled down at the numbers. Taken out by Neil Stasek. The Hermiston defensive starting lineup brought to you by Rogers Toyota. Neil Stasek and Ben Larson at the linebacker positions. It was going to be Kellen Young. Landon Shalhanek slipped in for him at Superman. Colin McCammy and Robert Akers at the defensive end. See you, Sepenny, Elijah Robinson at the tackles. In the secondary, Jaime Ramirez Ortega, Justice Council, Amituya, and Nathan Welty. Third down and four. Probably two down territory. Dive play up the middle. Maybe not. That one was sniffed out. And Sinek is uh, taken out with, well, they give him a gain of a yard up to the 28-yard line. And with 9-12 on the clock, it is spinning here in opening quarter action. Fourth down and three, and the Suns will go for it. Split out to the right, Gavin Allen, their tight end. Now he will slip into the right side. Michael Indergersall, wing back behind him. Again, Sinuk running to the left side. Again, Sinuk runs into Tanner McCoy. Stopped short of the 25. That's what he needed for the first down. And Hermiston's defense holds strong and forces a turnover on downs. 8.43, both teams have turned the ball over on downs. The gain was still for three for Sinuk. But he needed one more, and instead, Hermiston's offense back out with a first and 10 from the 26. Ball right in the middle of the park as they attack right to left. Ben Larson, the back to the right of Isaac Corey. 
Three options right for Corey. And a man alone to the left on first down and 10. Hand to Larson. Run play to the left side. Larson's got a good block out on the edge. Outside the numbers at the 35. He'll weave around another tackler and shove out at the 41-yard line. Good run for Larson. He's going to gain 16 and move the chains for Hermes. It's the first first down for either team. We're three and a half minutes in. From the 41, first down and 10. Larson again, coming right. This time he runs into a pile of white shirts. Let in there by Cliff Sandberg. The wingback is also a defensive end for Southridge. He's at one end. Noah Del Angel is at the other. Carson Conti, Wyatt Perry, the tackles. The linebackers, Denton Gillespie and Austin Geyer. The quarterback does play linebacker. Michael Indigersall, David Sinook, Jackson Williams in the secondary along with Coven Burke. Corey to throw. Open near sideline. Diving catch by Nathan Welty right at the midfield stripe. The pitch and catch to Welty will give Hermes to nine yards and bring up a third down and one. Welty's ninth catch of the season. He's now up over 60 yards. Has got into the end zone once. Connecting with Corey. Third down and one. Right at the 50 left hash mark. Corey looks at the defense. Blitz shown right up the middle. And he barks orders at his receivers to the right. Hard count and he got Southridge to jump. First penalty of the night is going to be five yards against the Suns. And it'll give Hermes to the first down. Up to the 45 into Southridge territory. First down and 10. Corey to throw. Pumps to the right. He'll step. He'll set up. Throw deep. Wide open down the middle. Austin Bledsoe. Down the seam. Bledsoe for 45 yards. And Hermiston's on the board. It's the growth that you heard Michael Mosier tell us about in Chalk Talk tonight. Corey's willingness to stay in the pocket, to trust his protection and keep his eyes downfield, to go through his progressions, and to get further down the progression list, knowing that all he had to do was take one step to the right, as opposed to probably three weeks ago, rolling out to the right to get way away from the pressure. Just one step to the right, 45 yards to Bledsoe, and a touchdown. Abel Alatori for the extra point out of the hole to land in Shilhanek. Slices is a little bit to the right, but it is through. And with 7.15 on the clock in the first quarter, Hermiston up 7-0, hosting the Southridge Suns on homecoming night. We'll be back here on AM 1360 KOHU. deep to return for the Suns. Drive takes a little bit more than a minute for Hermiston to uh, go down the field and put the first points on the board. They did most of it with that 45-yard pass by Isaac Corey to Austin Bledsoe. 7-0 with 7.15 on the clock in the opening quarter. Looking at the flag off to the east, 
it looks like there is actually a little bit of helping wind at Abel Alatori's back as he punches a low liner away, couple of bounces, and it'll bounce right off of uh, Sandberg's chest. He picks it up and then gets up to the 20-yard line before he is dropped. Nathan Welty in there on the stop on the return by Cliff Sandberg. Suns took over deep in Hermiston's territory on the opening drive, but end up turning the ball over on downs. Austin Geyer's not throwing the ball yet. First down and 10 for this wing T offense. Wing back to the right, tight end that way as well. Right up the middle, and as it gets to the 25, a five yard gain on first down. This was my key that I talked about in the uh, Swain Butters tailgate show, is for Hermiston's defense, it's winning that first down play. Because this is exactly where Southridge wants to live. Second and five, third and short, that's great for them. They want to take time off the clock. They want to keep the ball out of the hands of Hermiston's offense. Flag out from the near sideline. David Faitete, the head coach, 16 years here at Hermiston. About a decade in charge of the program now. He's clapping his hands to celebrate. That's going to be five yards against Southridge. This is like winning that first down. So second down and 10. Sandberg back behind Geyer. It's a design run for the quarterback out to the left side and Geyer will reach his hand out as he goes out of bounds, ushered out by Young. Give him a two yard gain to the 22. And this is where you want Southridge. Third down and long. Third down, third down and 10 will face them after Geyer's two yard run. 21 of 49 has been intercepted four times, 260 yards and two touchdowns passing the ball. He now has 83 yards rushing this season. Geyer will move Sandberg next to him. It's a shotgun set, rolling to the right. Geyer pressured there by Akers, steps back up. Now he's going the other direction, in trouble. He'll get around Welty, who grabs him up by the shoulder pads and throws him out. Short of the first down marker and out of bounds at the 28 yard line. Geyer was in trouble on a design play to go to the right that was blown up by Robert Akers at the defensive end on that side. Geyer ends up running for five. But with a fourth down and three facing Southridge, they will send Jackson Williams out to punt. Tommy Tuya and Kellen Young both back to return. They're backing up even on the other side of the 40. They are very deep right now as Williams gets it away. It's a good kick. Fair catch taken. And a Kellen Young has it at the 44. That's where Hermiston will have the ball. Up by seven. 6.07 left here in quarter number one. Hosting the Southridge Suns on homecoming night. These numbers actually, it wasn't that I didn't know that the numbers have been good offensively. I did. I didn't realize total offense 488, passing offense 324, yards per play 7.28. Those are all number one in the MCC. Play action. Isaac Corey will spin to his left away from pressure and will throw downfield. Found some space. Keep his eyes up. A catch and I may Ramirez Ortega stumbling himself out of bounds just trying to keep his balance out at the 35 yard line. That's for a 21 yard gain and Hermiston going no huddle. They want to move quick. Jaime Ramirez Ortega's first catch of the night, 21st of the season. That's number one in the MCC. He is now over 300 yards. That's number one in the MCC. Bulldogs looking to keep putting up video game numbers. Under six minutes left in the first quarter. Isaac Corey will keep on a read option, running left behind his left guard, Hunter Allen, and his left tackle, Elijah Robinson. Corey runs for four. 
He hasn't done that a ton this year, especially in designed runs, but that is his 35th carry of the year for 78 yards. He has got into the end zone five times on the ground. So Isaac Corey runs for four, second down and six from the 31. Out to the left side, Corey will keep it again. Across the 25, tripped up. Kind of ran into his own blocker. Welty was out there against Aiden Sloot. So Sloot will get credit for the tackle. Corey is going to get credit with up to the 24, which is enough to move the chains. A rushing first down on the six yard gain. Welty alone to the left side. Two receiver targets right for Isaac. Slaps his hands together. Fakes a handoff to Larson. Rolling right. Pressured that way. Isaac pumps, throws as he's being grabbed from the backside, and it's incomplete. Isaac had Gavin Allen on his back, and Allen, the senior, stands 6'6, 220. Earlier this week, got the type of call you're looking for if you're a high school football player. Eastern Washington University offered him a preferred walk-on position. Matt Johnson, the head coach's alma mater, so potentially a trip to Cheney. Allen makes trouble there, so second down and 10. Corey did well to get rid of the ball in just an incompletion. From the 24 right hash mark, straight drop. Corey stands in the pocket, lobs it to the right corner, too far, incomplete over Landon Shalonik's head. Mike Mosier told us, if we're looking at what's the next level type of thing for Isaac Corey, those touch passes are where he still has to kind of chase down the ghost of Chase Knutes, uh, who was so good at throwing that kind of pass, that fade route, anything that involved kind of dropping it in a bucket from a long ways away. Third down and 10 from the 24, five minutes left in the first quarter, Hermiston by a touchdown. Isaac Corey again to throw, pressured, he will spin away from it, flag out, and he will go backwards the wrong way. Sacked. Cliff Sandberg chases him down all the way back to the 44. They're going to give him the 41, but it is still a tremendous loss. The flag is back out where you would suspect holding is going to be the penalty. If that's the indication, you would also expect that Southridge will decline it. Holding is indicated. The loss for Isaac is 22 yards backwards. Holding is the same. But Southridge will decline the holding penalty. They will take the result, the minus 22 rushing for Isaac. And now fourth down and 10 becomes fourth down and 32. So, punt team. And a change. Instead of Abel Alatori, Max Shulhanek, the sophomore, is going to punt. Maybe. He will, but after David Faitete talks about things. Timeout for Hermiston. 4.36 left in the first quarter, leading 7 to nothing. We'll take that break as well on AM 1360 KOHU. Timeout. Oh. Yeah, he should have definitely been on there. He's the leader receiver. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You got Isaac minus. This is the part that I worried If you get the first downs right, it'll be fine. I can go back and look. Uh, oh. Put P for pass, put P E N for penalty. That'll be easier. Out of the timeout, Max Shalhanik angles a punt towards the Southridge sidelines. It's out of bounds at the 10 yard line. It's a punt to 31 yards, his first ever punt at the varsity level. And with 4.30 left in quarter number one, a touchdown lead for Hermiston. They're back on defense for the third time. Southridge is still looking for their first first down of the night. 
Grant Harrison at a wing back to the left. Now he will slide out as a split end. As they shift the formation again, Ingersoll wing back right. Tripped over to the right side, handoff on a sweep, Sandberg. Taken down after a two yard gain to the 12. Early on, Hermiston doing a very good job with that linebacking core, getting in and making plays. Led by Neil Stasek and Ben Larson, the leading tacklers on this team. For the Suns, Coven Burke is back in, split end out to the left. Sandberg directly behind. Geyers, he goes under center. And Robbie Akers jumps into the neutral zone. Hermiston will be called for offsides and give five yards to the Suns. Making second at eight, now second and short. Defensive Mention Gavin Allen, the preferred walk-in offer to Eastern Washington. At 6'6", I believe the old man cliche is he's a tall drink of water. He does play tight end, and he plays defensive end. Tight end to the right right now on this second down and three. Dive play, Sloot running to the left side, and it's just bottled up. Hermiston doing a really good job to the point of attack. And part of that is Tanner McCoy is causing all sorts of havoc. Hermiston without Tanner last week, he was away from the program, dealing with uh, family. And not in a negative way, but Tanner had to be away with his uh, family last week. And so Hermiston without him at Walla Walla, but to have him back in, essentially lining up right over the top of Jamie Torres, the center at a nose tackle position, it's really creating some problems for the inside running game. Geyer's back of the pistol on this first down and a 10 play. Out to the right side on the read option. Gets out to the edge. Stasek brings him down by the hips at the 23. Geyer gains three. Wait, it says second down. It really feels like... I think give Sloot I mean, excuse me, not Salute, uh, Sinyuk, better yardage than I expected on that previous run. He ended up getting three. That was three as well. Second down and seven from the 23. Dive play up the middle. And again, McCoy's in there to uh, slow things up. And then it all gets bottled up for Gabe Borsch. Two-yard gain, third down, and it's four and a half. Taking a look at the uh, field turf here that is spotlighted by the lights at Bulldog Stadium. Geyer again from the shotgun set. Sloot in motion right to left. It's a toss play to him out to the edge. Uh, hit and dropped. Out around the corner, Kellen Young got out and cut off the edge on what wanted to be a sweep play. So Sloot had to turn it up field and he turned it up right into Jaime Ramirez Ortega and it ended up just a one yard gain. So Aiden Sloot's one yard gain means fourth down and three and again, Southridge will punt with a minute 35 left in the first quarter, down seven, nothing. Young and Tuya back to return. They're not quite as deep this time for Jackson Williams. Punting for about the same spot. Got it away under some pressure. This time it will bounce. Checks up like a wedge right at the 50 yard line. It's a 22 yard punt and Hermiston will have it at midfield with a minute 17 left in the first quarter. Leading by seven, hosting the Southridge Suns. Trying to get their third win of the year. Three wins in the Mid-Columbia Conference just a year ago. Went three and five of the conference, four and six overall. They ended up in that week 10 crossover game where there's 
nowhere to go after that game. Southridge was the team that made the playoffs along with Kennewick out of the 3A. Quick flip play to Landon Shilhanek. Sweep play coming out to the near sideline. To his left, and Shilhanek catches it. Runs out of bounds. It's going to go as a pass play that gains 14 yards up to the 36-yard line. Shalonic's first of the night. All the indications were he was doing much better. He was back last week after the injury suffered in week one against Hanford that kept him out against Richland. But wasn't at 100%. The speed is back. First down and 10 from the 36. Corey to throw. Quickly, left side. Justice Council's first catch. Breaks a tackle. And another stays in. Tightrope in the sideline. Shoved out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Council ends up working his way to a 13-yard gain. And Hermiston gets another first down. Justice a week ago was one yard short. Three feet short of a century mark, had 99 yards on five catches. First down and 10 from the 21, Corey hands off. Run play up the middle, Larson breaks to his right, comes and spins off of a tackler inside the five yard line, down to the three. 19 yard run for Ben Larson. Hermiston had been keen on outside stuff, finally went back to an inside zone run, and Ben Larson broke into the open. Under a minute left, Hermiston trying to make it a two-score game. First and goal from the three. Larson to the right of Corey, takes the handoff, running left. Larson patiently piles into the end zone. Put his hand right on the back of Elijah Robinson and followed the big left tackle into pay dirt for the score. Two-score lead for Hermiston with 44 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. The Bulldogs' defense yet to allow Southridge to really get any forward momentum. And now Abel Alatori to add the extra point. Kicks through. And Hermiston's lead is 14 to nothing with 44 seconds remaining. In the opening quarter, Ben Larson with the three yard touchdown run. So for the rest of the MCC, take a look at the uh, scoreboard brought to you by Columbia Orthodontics. It was a very big 4A game last night as the uh, Chihuahua River Hawks end up beating Richland 27 to 14. Chihuahua and Richland are each three and one. Chihuahua suffering that week one loss to Kamiakin. Kamaikin's 2-1 and because they lost non-conference to Moses Lake. They and Kennewick locking up tonight at Lampson. Kennewick is the only team that's perfect across the board. Walla Walla is at Edgar Brown Stadium playing Pasco tonight. And Hanford is the non-conference team this week. They're over in Vancouver at Mountain View. Looking ahead to next week, the... Hermiston Bulldogs have their non-conference game. It's a trip to Yakima and West Valley High School. Hermiston right now with a 14-0 lead, looking like maybe they'll take a little win streak, a 3-1 and one record in. But plenty of football left. Southridge waiting to return. Down 14-0 with 44 seconds left as Abel Alatori. Kind of a line drive his last one. This is a high end over end kick and it will go over Sandberg's head halfway into the end zone for the touchback. Matt Johnson and Tyler Hogue, the offensive coordinator for Southridge, they have to find an answer to what Tanner McCoy is doing to disrupt all of their movement, all of their shifting, all of that stuff that's supposed to make the wing tee so difficult to defend. First down 10 from the 20. Geyer under center, hands off, sweep play to the right, and Sanderson, just Sandberg, excuse me, just a yard out to the right side, bottled up Stasek, got around to help out. Neil Stasek, the stop for the Bulldogs. Right now, Hermiston 
And David Faitete told us that they would, a little bit more frequently this year, change what their defensive front numbers look like. Going from four-man front to three-man front. They got a three-man front going right now, an extra backer on the field. Five on the play clock. I, Southridge is not going to get this play off. But they don't need to because that is the end of the uh, first quarter. 14 to nothing, Hermiston. One quarter in the books here at Kennison Field on homecoming night when we return to Hermiston High School at AM 1360 KOHU. AM 1360 KOHU, and we welcome you back to Bulldog Stadium down on Kennison Field. Hermiston 14, Southridge 0. The Suns with the ball to start the second quarter, down by two scores. Austin Geyer will go under center. Split in out to the left, wing back right in motion. That's Sloot, fake the toss to him, hand off of the counter, go in the other direction. Caught for a loss out on the right edge. Robbie Akers makes the stop. That was Sloot actually. The fake was Ingersoll, Sloot was the runner, didn't actually lost a yard back to the 20. And now the Suns are in this third down and 10. Geyer has not attempted to throw the ball yet tonight. The Southridge senior quarterback. The team's huddled. The play clock has not been reset yet. Now there's 25 up. First down and 10 at the 20, right hash mark set. Back into a shotgun, Geyer to throw. Will lob it down the near sideline, jump ball, and Coven Burke is bobbling the ball, pulls it in up to the 45. The first pass of the game, Geyer into double coverage, and Burke, the 6'2 sophomore, out jumps Hermiston, catches it 25 yards, gained at a first down for the Suns. It's the farthest out of their own end they've been able to get the ball since they took over on that opening drive at Hermiston's 35 on the turnover on downs. But they're still down by two scores, attacking right to left in the second quarter. Just over a minute gone here in the quarter. A spin move to the right on the handoff up to the 50-yard line. Five-yard gain, some positive yardage for Michael Ingersoll. The 5'11", a senior wing back. Geyer looks off to the far sideline. And will wait as Tenta Gillespie, the senior, will bring the play in. Gillespie comes in and replaces Ingersoll, who just had that run. Gillespie will line up as the wing back to the right, Sloot to the left. Shotgun for Geyer. And movement right down Broadway. Elijah Robinson. No, check that. That wasn't Elijah. Dominic Echeverria. Once he turned a little, I could see that was a zero, not a five. So an encroachment penalty on Hermiston, five yards forward. And it will also move the chains for Southridge. It's good enough for a first down. 
so the penalties are so it goes in this one. Now into Hermiston territory at the 45. Guy will go back under center on this first down and 10 from the 45. Hand off Sloot. Sweet play to the right. Sloot will get six yards coming and barreling his way to the 39-yard line. Max Ugarte on the stop for the Bulldogs. Maximus Ugarte in the lineup for the first time here in week four makes the stop. Suns make a lot of switches on and off. They're having a wing back bring the new play in. Coven Burke split out to the right side. Sandberg wing back to the left on the second down and 10. It's a pass play. Geyer in trouble. Geyer's caught by C. Use a penny. Drop back at midfield. Excuse me, that was Maximus. Maxi Garte is the one who gets in. That's a six, not a five. Number 63 gets back to the quarterback. And the loss is nine. Southridge facing third down and a 13. Three minutes gone in quarter number two, trailing by 14. Line of scrimmage to the 48 in Hermiston territory. Geyer, play action to throw. Deep ball right side. Knocked out by Jaime Ramirez Ortega. Timed it well. Knew he wasn't going to get there. And so he timed it on Sloot to get there when the ball got there and just hit him right in the rib cage to knock it out. Fourth down and long. And Southridge has to punt again. It's going to be the fourth and long for the Suns. Back to Jake Williams to punt. Jackson Williams will stand just across his 35 to punt with the line of scrimmage on the Hermiston side of the 50. Kind of a looping snap to Williams. He'll get a low bounding ball. It's going to work out for Southridge. Roll inside the 10. Shepherded by a Chop and Hunkapiller all the way down to the eight yard line. 40 yards on the punt for Jackson Williams. Hermiston's got 92 yards between them and the end zone, leading by 14. 825 left here in the first half at Hermiston High School's Bulldog Stadium down on Kennison Field. Isaac Corey in the offense going back to work. Had a lot of success on the ground in spots. Ami Tui is in the backfield to the right of Corey. Shotgun set for the junior quarterback. Put a motion man. Toss that way. And out to the right side, Justin counts on the sweep play. Has the edge at the 20. Down the near sideline, 30. Caught and dropped into the Hermiston bench by David Sanook. But just as Council ends up gaining, oh, now I got to do the math. Sonny's not here for that. From the eight to the 34, no, you can do the math. Yeah, 26 yards gain. Flag out on the far side as Corey will throw a deep ball to Shalhanik. He stepped out of bounds, came back and caught it, but he was out of bounds anyway. We will check on the marker on the far side that came out at the snap of the ball. Indication on this penalty is an illegal procedure against Hermiston. Southridge declines it. Because of the incompletion, they'll take the down. So no penalty. And second down and 10 for Hermiston from their 34. Right hash mark set. Nathan Welty is wide to the left. Austin Bledsoe inside of him had the 45-yard touchdown. Robbie Akers is... 
set up as a tight end left. And Kellen Young is alone to the right. Corey slaps his hands, fakes it, throws it. Screen play to Welty. Welty coming back to his left, grabbed by the shirt, and is slowed up. Flag out as Welty ends up losing yards back to the 30-yard line. Up by a bunch of Minus four. We're going to check on the marker. It came from behind on the play. Seven fifty one left here in quarter number two. And Bulldogs have kind of flipped to different pages of the playbook throughout this evening. They've shown a little bit of inside zone. They've shown a little bit of read option. Another penalty against Hermiston declined by Southridge, so they will take the result, which is a four-yard loss on the pass to Welty. And third and 14 from the 30. Very large crowd here tonight at Bulldog Stadium for homecoming. They need something to cheer for. This third down and long, Isaac Corey will take the snap, fake to Larson, step in the pocket, lots of time, throw over the middle, bobbled and dropped. It was Krebs in first down territory. He couldn't hold on to it. And the drop means Hermiston has to punt it away with a little more, a little less than eight minutes remaining in the first half. Look off towards the high school and off to my right, I three, see three large purple boxes. That means that they are bringing out the boxes that will tell somebody that they are the queen of the homecoming court. Max Jelonic, the sophomore to punt, got a good angled punt his last time. We'll angle this one. Well hit. And at the 40 yard line, caught. Burke falls back onto his backside as he catches it. And so, Southridge to take over on their 40, down 14 to nothing. There's a bundle of Corvettes off in the direction of Weber Field to the northeast near the high school, waiting to bring the homecoming court onto the track for the halftime festivities. First down play for Southridge. They've got some yardage for Sanook. And an eight yard gain for him running left. Eight, two. Best individual play of the night for Southridge. Just short of midfield, they have it. Second down and two. The Suns team, one of the things about that deep run they made a year ago was they did it with 28 seniors. So Matt Johnson said, most of these guys didn't play last year, except for Guy or the quarterback. Hands off again, left side running. Gersall gets first down yardage before he is planted by Ami Tuya. Up to the 44. That will move the chains. Ingersoll a gain of seven. Clock is spinning, 6.40 left in quarter number two. This 14-0 game. Salute the wing back to the right. Sandberg left, and he will lead block for Sanook, who is hammered. Ran left side, Colin McCammy stepped up, filled the hole, and planted Sanook after a three-yard gain at the 41. So that's one of the changes here is McCammy that has been playing defensive end. He has moved back into one of the linebacker spots as Hermiston has been kind of content with putting three down linemen and then letting the linebackers find and fill holes based on what they're seeing with formation. Second and seven from the uh, 41 in Hermiston territory. Left side run in there. 
diving down at the shoe tops. A tackle made by Stasek on Sloot. Sloot does gain three more. Out of the 38 yard line, third down and four to go for the Suns. Southridge would love to find a way to put some points on the board here before the team's at the locker room. 5.15, there's probably still two possessions remaining for them, especially as quickly as Hermiston's possessions run. Third down four, left hash mark. Hard count from Geyer. Can't get Hermiston to jump. Play clock rolling down. Geyer snaps it with two on the play clock. Sandberg running right side this time. Runs into the pile, stops him at the 35. Fourth and one at Hermiston's 35. You presume the Bulldog defense has to do it one more time after another three yard gain. Sandberg's fourth carry. Nine yards for him early on. The statistics brought to you by the Hermiston School District. Fourth and one at the 35. Burke, the split end to the right. Dive play and break it into the opening out to the left side. Sadok gets down inside Hermiston's 10, caught from behind by Ami Tuya, down to the five yard line. The saving play for Ami Tui to keep Southridge out of the end zone. David Sanook, however, defense, 34? 34. Defense, Sanook the deep man. Him again, running right this time. Sanook reaches for the goal line. Not quite there. Lines been over on the far side, runs in and says short by about six inches. Give him a four yard gain. 334 left in the quarter. And the Suns looking to get on the board, down by 14. Geyer keeps it, quarterback run. Did he start to move before the snap? He did. False start penalty, a five yard penalty on Southridge. Austin Geyer went under center and he started to go before the snap. And that's what got flagged. So now the Suns are second and goal from the six. It's still right there knocking on the door, but Southridge had one foot inside the door. Now Hermiston says, you're still not allowed in the house. Sloot the wing back to the right. Sandberg the wing back left. Geyer pistol. Tossed to the left side and not a whole lot for Geyer on a quarterback keep play. Stasek, on the stop. Stasek stops him. Geyer did get back to the line of scrimmage, so no gain. Third down and goal from the six. Down 14 to nothing. This is an interesting thought experiment because Matt Johnson and Tyler Hogue have to start thinking about what do they do if they don't get in here? Are three points enough before you head into the locker room at halftime? Down 14 to nothing. Slute in the fullback position. Wing backs each way. Play action to throw. Geyer out to the right side. Incomplete. Flags fly from every which direction. Coven Burke was guarded by Jaime Ramirez Ortega. And it did look like Jaime maybe had an arm on the shoulder of Burke. Pass interference is the indication. Half the distance to the goal means it's only a three yard penalty. And it's high school football, so it's not an automatic first down. Third down and goal, it's still from the three. That pass wasn't going to be caught. Burke had no idea where it was. Two minutes, 32 seconds left in the second quarter. Five, 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 
Sadok. It'll be him diving to the left side, stopped short. To the one, Ugarte in there on the uh, tackle for Hermiston. Boy, right now they've got the heavy set on the line. Tanner McCoy, Maximus Ugarte, Andre Saldana. And then you put Akers at one end and McCam at the other end. Fourth down and goal from the one. Two minutes left in the second quarter. Southridge trying to get on the board. Again, left side run. This time, Sanook is in. And Southridge is on the board for the first time tonight. A wing T offense is going to trust that they can get three yards every time they snap the ball. It's kind of the philosophy behind why you would run an offense that has very little in the sense of a passing game. And that's what they went with. Ends up with a touchdown and now Jackson Williams to add the extra point. A minute 52 remaining in the first half. Williams the right footed kick, it's a low snap. He chips it up and is good to cut Hermiston's lead in half. 14 to seven, a minute 52 left in the first half when we return to Hermiston High School here on AM 1360 KOHU. Just under two minutes left in the second quarter. You can lift it if you want. Hermiston's got timeouts. Two of them remaining for David Faitete. Jaime Ramirez Ortega to the right, Nathan Welty to the left. As Jackson Williams approaches, he will roll another ball. Joe Gonzag bobbles it, picks it up, coming out to the right side. Gonzag across the 30. And the senior speedster on this newly refinished this year track. He's one of those sub-11, 100-yard guys. Does end up returning about 14 yards to the 34. And Hermiston has those 66 yards in between them and getting back a two-score lead. Up 14 to 7. In the final minute, 47 of the first half. Isaac Corey's got Ben Larson to his right. As much as Larson's been doing as a runner, He's also become a really important piece of the pass protection. Corey fakes it to Larson. Quick throw right side. Shilhanik's got it on the screenplay. Shilhanik down the near sideline. will Step out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Eight-yard gain. Out of bounds, so it stops the clock. And Hermiston can preserve the two timeouts. Justice Council is wide to the left. I'm Aaron Ramirez Ortega inside of him that way. And Shalonic again, right side. Isaac Corey. He's got Stasic as the tight end right. On second down, flip it. Shalonic running left side. Breaks a tackle in the backfield. Getting out to the edge with his speed. Ends up running out of bounds. Will run out backwards a couple of yards. It could have been a lot worse. As Shalonik was in trouble in the backfield, but Gabe Borsch dive at his legs. He couldn't pull Shalonik down. Loss of three yards to Landon. Third down. Three yards to go. Left hash mark set. Isaac Corey will roll right side. Pressure out the way. Corey throws to the sideline. 
finds Bledsoe. Cross midfield, up to the 51 yard line. Who's that? 10 yard pass, Austin Bledsoe has it. Into Southridge territory and Hermiston's got another first down. Two receivers left, one to the right. For Corey, first down and 10. Minute 27 left. Clock paused because Bledsoe went out of bounds. Corey will survey the defense. Slap his hands and Southridge jumps offside. Five yard penalty against the Suns. And it did look like Southridge was going to be bringing pressure. Up to the 44, first down and five. Suns. Back to their more traditional 3-3 stack defense. Corey to throw, quickly over the middle. It's a battle ball, comes back to Corey, catches it. He's rolling out to the left side. Corey will throw to the sideline, a little low, incomplete. Flag out at the end of things. Corey threw a forward pass, it got batted back to him, and then he threw another one. Creativity for sure. Illegal creativity as well. Minute 17 left in the first half. We've replaced one flag on the 49. Got the ball set in on the line of scrimmage. The referee's flag is sitting back in the backfield. It's probably one of those things, Isaac's seen a replay from YouTube, some quarterback gets the ball batted back to him. And he's like, I think I can throw this again. Why not? Usually those replays make it because the quarterback catches and then he runs, but Isaac knew he didn't, he didn't have an angle out to the left as he was being pursued. This one's so good, the crew is just making sure they've dotted all their I's and crossed all their T's. It's a five, it's a 10 yard penalty and it's a loss of down on the illegal forward pass. So move it back to the Hermiston 46. Minute 17 left. Hermiston still has their two timeouts. Second down, 15 to go. Left hash mark. Isaac Corey takes the snap. Straight drop. Corey steps up in the pocket. Now look at a run. He's in trouble. Caught from behind. Sandwiched. Sandberg gets there to finish off. Sandberg on the stop. Noah Angel was the uh, first man to Corey. Ends up a loss of two for Isaac. Southridge has three timeouts remaining. The clock's spinning with 50 seconds left and... No, no timeout, just... Angel has to come off of the field for an equipment issue. So Gavin Allen will come back on. Clock should spin again, it will. 48 seconds left, third down and long. Corey looking to set up a screen. Lot of pressure, throws it underneath or hopped. Jaime Ramirez Ortega drop. Here in the second quarter, Hermiston has had two drops. Krebs has one, Ramirez Ortega has another. I don't know that Jaime is gonna get a first down out of that. He still had about 20 yards to run on the screenplay. But either way, now it's a moot point as Max Shalhanek has to punt. Shalhanek takes a snap, gets away a low kind of miss hit kick. It's gonna work for Hermiston. And just across the 30 yard line, one of the 
protectors running down to uh, block. Realize the ball was right next to him as John Roderick, the senior, actually pretty heads up, falls on it so it doesn't go further down the field. And the Suns will take over on the 30-yard line. They've got 36 and a half seconds. They are not really built to get the ball back into the end zone, down 14 to seven. They just don't pass the ball a lot. Probably they try to do something, maybe trick in the backfield. Sadook, and Sadook will cut back to his right. Good gain, eight, nine yards, and Southridge will call a timeout with 29.6 seconds remaining here in the first half. Timeout. So coming up at halftime, it is homecoming. It is that extended homecoming. They will honor the court. We are going to be in an extended interview during halftime. I talked with Catherine Doherty, a sophomore with Hermiston's ASB, and the new ASB director, Mackenzie Davis, the Hermiston High grad back when she was Mackenzie Bird. Now in charge of the ASB, took over for Dave Rohrman, who is one of the honorary captains here tonight. So we're going to be hearing from them. And a piece of that is so that I'm not trying to talk over the fireworks show that is part of the long halftime interlude. So it means I'm not going to really be able to tell you about the court itself. I may not either because we're out of this timeout. If, I, if we get another timeout, I'll... I'll I'll tell you who the court is. Once upon a time, there were some listeners egged on by Angela that thought I should describe the dresses that were being worn as well. Throw down the right side. Burke in a one-on-one -on -one against Ramirez Ortega. And Jaime defends it well. So it's third down and one for Southridge with 24 seconds remaining. Now here's the danger if you're Southridge. If you don't get this first down and there's another incompletion, Hermiston will absolutely try to put points on the board with two timeouts and 20 seconds. Mike Mosier's got something in the playbook to try to dial up a big play. So third and one's pretty important here for the Suns. As Geyer goes under center. Dive play, first down yardage of four, Sadook. And Southridge will call their other timeout with that first down and a new set of downs to work with. So that gains three. Okay, the court. I don't know what they're wearing. Freshman, Princess Alexia Seibel and Prince Lane Simmons. Unfortunately, we had to highlight Lane's leg injury at Hanford in week one. All the indications are doing pretty well, recovering from the uh, broken leg. The sophomores, Princess Carolyn Follett, part of the volleyball program, and if I can put two and two together, also the daughter of the honorary captain from 1994, Justin Follett. And the prince is Tanner Wicks. He will not be out there. They'll have like some giant blown up picture of his head because he'll be in the locker room. Princess Sarah Boston for the juniors and Prince Robert Akers. Robbie also will be in the locker room. And then the scene. Haley Mercer, Myla McAdams, and Megan Joyce. And the princes will all be in the locker room. Javier Echeverria, Abel Alatori, and Justice Council. First down and 10 out of the Southridge timeout. Deep ball right side, lot of jockeying both ways. No flags come out either way as Jaime Ramirez Ortega and Coven Burke were locked up. That one could have just as easily been a push off by the offense. So no flag, I guess it's like treating it like a Hail Mary at the end of the half. 14 and a half seconds left in the first half. I mentioned Justin Follett, Dave Rohrman from 1984. Andy Hall of 2004 and Trenton Anto of 2014. The honorary captains along with the class of 2034 from Loma Vista. Big play, sack there. Going backwards, Geyer is tackled back at the 30 yard line. Ben Larson as Hermiston goes a 
Jailbreak blitz. They get to Geyer, drop him for a loss. Geyer is going to lose 12, and that's how the first half ends. Can't forget to finish out the thought. The class of 2034, Blaine Nolan and Parker Ben Dixon from Loma Vista, second graders, each of them are also part of the honorary captains. All sorts of extra festivities, extra accoutrement to this homecoming night here at Hermiston High School. Going into the locker room, Hermiston 14, Southridge 7. Bulldogs after a 14-0 lead, lead by just a touchdown, and the offense definitely started to stall throughout that second quarter. They're gonna start bringing some Corvettes out onto the newly refinished track here at Hermiston High School and honor the court for homecoming. This is your warning. Let's call it your 10 minute warning, maybe 15 minute warning. Fireworks are pending. Somebody make sure Jasper's okay. It's going to get loud here at Bulldog Stadium in a moment. When we come back, we will talk to ASB. Both Catherine Doherty, a member of the ASB, and their director, Mackenzie Davis. Halftime is presented by Devon Oil Circle K. Here on your hometown radio station, AM 1360, KOHU. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the pleasure of the Hermiston ASB to announce to you our 2023 All Court. We start tonight with freshman princess Alexia Seidel. Alexia's parents are Kevin and Caroline Seidel. She competes in wrestling and tennis. In her spare time, she likes to walk her dog, clean her room, sing like she is on American Idol, and watch the she would like to thank her mom for always staying by her side for light and dark. For being the best advice giver, the shoulder to cry on, and most importantly, her shopping bag. She would also like to thank her dad for always asking how her day was, sharing laughs with her, and always standing by her side no matter what. Lastly, she wants to thank her friends and family for being her cheerleaders. Freshman Princess, Alexi Sack. Freshman Prince, Wayne Simmons. Wayne's parents are Justin and Alyssa Simmons. Wayne competes in football. His favorite high school member so far, his first period up with his buddies. We would like to thank his family for being there for him. That is Freshman Prince, Wayne Simmons. Sophomore Princess Carolyn Fall. Carolyn's parents are Justin Fuller and Leah Gatson. She competes in volleyball and track and field. Her favorite high school memory so far would be her freshman volleyball season. She would like to thank her Nana, who always is there for her through thick and thin. Also, thank you to her parents and sisters. Sophomore Princess Carolyn Fall. She's accompanied by sophomore prince Tanner Wicks. Tanner's parents are Nathan and Monica Wicks. He competes in football. His favorite high school memory so far is going to EOU football camp. He would like to give a special thanks to his parents for raising him and shaping him into the person he is today. Thank you to his girlfriend Mariah for being there and listening to him and helping him when he needs it. Also, to his friend group for voting for him, for always being able to make him laugh, even in the worst times. And a sophomore prince, Tanner Wicks. Next, junior princess, Sandy Boston. Taylor's parents are Stephen and Sandy Boston. She competes on the dance team. Winning two state titles last season and hopefully win three more with. She 
like to thank her tight-knit group of three friends who have been through the ups and downs with her, as well as her mom and dad who have been there for her since day one. And finally, to John for all the support and love. I love you all. That is Junior Princess, Sailor Boston. Our Junior Prince is Robbie Akers. Robbie's parents are Zila Akers and Alex Alvarez. He competes in football, basketball, track, and part of the leadership class. His favorite memory so far is when Brad Hotman hugged him before his discus throw, and he got a PR by 20 feet. He wants to give a special thanks to his mom and let her know he loves her so much. She always shows love to me when others don't. She is my Rodney if I were Jordan. He would not be here now if it was not for her. We'd also like to send out a special thank you to all his coaches, friends, family, and teachers for helping him in life. And his junior prince, Robert Akers. Our first senior princess, Haley Mercer. Haley's parents are Micah and Melissa Mercer. She competes in cross country, basketball, and track. Her favorite high school memory is her junior track season where Haley and a couple of others snatch Coach Mosier's phone and dumped a bucket of white or ice water over his head. She'd like to give a special thanks to everyone that voted for her. Also, a shout out to Sydney Stockton. You're my real idea and I love She's accompanied by senior prince, Javier Echeverri. Javier's mom is Maria Ornelas. He competes in football, wrestling, and track. His goal for this school year is to make it to the football playoffs. He would like to give a special thanks to his family and a shout out to the milk boys. That's senior prince, Javier Echeverri. Our next senior princess is Myla McAdams. Myla's mom is Araceli Jaime. She's involved in HOSA as an officer. Her favorite memory is going to state and slow pitch softball her sophomore year. She'd like to say thank you to her boyfriend, friends, and her family for all they do. Senior princess, Myla McAdams. Her senior prince is Abel Alatore Lara. Abel's parents are Adolfo Alatore and Maria Lara. He competes in soccer and football. His favorite high school memory is the endless laughs with the guys during soccer season. We would like to give a special thanks to everyone who showed true friendship and kindness. Most importantly, to God for putting him in the position he is currently in. That is Senior Prince, Abel Alatore Lara. Our next senior princess is Megan Joyce. Megan's parents are Philip and Tina Joyce. She competes in cross country and track and field. She is also a National Honor Society. Her favorite memory so far of high school, traveling to Costa Rica last summer on a school trip. She would like to say a special thank you to her family who has lifted her up over these last years and thank you to her parents especially for their commitment to being involved and active in everything she does. The senior princess, Megan Jones. And senior prince, Justice Council. Justice parents are Justin and Danita Council. He competes in football and track and field. In his spare time, he enjoys getting to eat Ben's food for free every day for lunch. Justice would like to give a special thanks to the man above and all his dogs. That is Senior Prince, Justice, Council. of the senior homecoming court get positioned, we'll have the reveal. 
of our home cut, Kenny Green. Followed by a, an exciting display of pyrotechnic magic. Are we ready for the reveal? Let's do this in four, three, two, one. Let's go. And your homecoming king and queen, Megan Joyce and Justice Cuts.
It's okay. We're family. Who's a black penny? No. License plate of 396 CSU as in Charlie Sam Unicorn. Your car is illegally parked in a no parking spot and you will be towed if you do not move it swiftly. A black Pontiac 396 CSU license plate. Move your car now, please. Coming night at Hermiston High School and the Bulldogs and the Southridge Suns are getting ready for second half action. Down on the field during the halftime festivities, the senior princesses each got to open up a essentially empty package. Well, except not empty for Megan Joyce. Megan and Justice Council, the king and queen of uh, the uh, homecoming court. So that stuff's out of the way. There's still a dance tomorrow night, but right now the focus has to be on two more quarters of football here tonight on Kennison Field. The Bulldogs jumped out to a 14-0 lead. The offense really sputtered and stalled in the second quarter. We'll see what adjustments uh, they make, but also the Southridge Suns started to find some success with their wing T offense, and usually it's actually the reverse. When you haven't seen the wing T for a long time, it's big hitting plays in that first quarter, and then the linebackers start to settle in with what they're actually supposed to be following, what the keys are, and you start to get a little bit more consistent, but Suns have started to develop their consistency in the uh, second quarter, and they were able to get on the board. So now 14 to seven, and they will start with the ball when we start this uh, second half. Take a look at the uh, statistics brought to you by the uh, Hermiston uh, School District. David Siduk, 12 carries, 78 yards. He's the leading rusher in the game. Aiden Sloot, Cliff Sandberg each added nine more. Michael Ingersoll with 12 on a couple of carries. Austin Geyer has gone the wrong direction, uh, but that's in part because of sacks. He's at negative eight yards. So all told, if I do the quick math there, that's 88, that's 100, and then, yeah, so 92 yards on the ground for Southridge. Geyer has completed one of the five passes he's thrown for 25 yards. On the Hermiston side of things, Ben Larson, 41 yards on the ground. Isaac Corey, 10 yards on the ground, 51 yards on the ground, and 131 yards through the air for Isaac. Nine passes completed, 17 attempted, no interceptions, no yes, touchdown. And the uh, Bulldogs uh, leading receiver, Austin Bledsoe, he had the 45 yard touchdown catch that got Hermiston on the board. He has 55 yards receiving and Justice Council, two catches for 39 yards. Hermiston 14, Southridge 7 here at the half. Bulldogs will kick off to the Suns. Hermiston, homecoming night, home uniforms, all black uniforms with gold numerals and lettering in the white helmets. All white uniform for Southridge, attacking left to right here in quarter number three. Cliff Sandberg is the returner to the right. 
and Tanta Gillespie to the left. Both are standing inside the 10. As Abel Alatori has it, teed his last kickoff, a touchback. Abel takes an unusually long run up. He was one of the princes. He's also a soccer player. He takes a 13 yard run up to the kickoff. Hammers this one. This one's into the end zone and almost all the way through the back of the end zone. Maybe juiced up a little bit. The Bulldogs did get back out onto the field in time to watch the uh, fireworks show. Larry Escher said, the athletic director and activities director for the school district. It's the same fireworks show. Essentially, they make the same order that they make for graduation. And that's a 17 minute show. And so they condense 17 minutes into like five minutes. Suns with the ball, first down and 10 from the 20. Austin Gar is gonna be pistol set with Saduk right behind him to throw on the first play. Deep ball near sideline, popped into the air, diving attempt just out of the reach of Ami Tuya. He was helping out the cover there by Jaime Ramirez Ortega. It was really just a, a yo baby ball to Coven Burke. That's what Hermiston calls those deep balls. I mean, it was one step and Geyer just threw it up, hoping that Burke, with his height, could out jump Jaime Ramirez Ortega. Second out and 10. Geyer back under center. Handoff is snuffed out. And Saduk has nowhere to go. In fact, he loses a yard. Leading rusher of the game now. One yard backwards, and it's third down and 11 for the Suns. This is the downside to trying that pass play right at the start. So. Geyer, who is one of six, presumably it's a passing down situation as well. They don't look at Gavin Allen much. The 6'6 six, six tight end is the guy you would think you'd just throw the ball up in the air and tell him, go get it. He's the tight end left. Hand off, left side run, Ingersoll, he's got space. Ingersoll out to the left side, first down yardage. Driven out of bounds by Ami to into the uh, Southridge bench, but... Michael Ingersoll with one of the biggest runs of the night for the Suns. Gains 18 yards and moves the chains on third down and long. Not quite a minute into the uh, third quarter. And so now Hermiston's defense just kind of like a let up play there. Expecting a pass, not ready for the buck sweep but from the right wing back out to the left side. Sandberg is the wing back left. Ingersoll in the backfield along with the Sanook. Ingersoll again, left side run. Gets out to the edge. This time he has no space as Robbie Akers chases him down. Tackle by Akers. No gain on the play. Second attempt for the Suns. They'll end up giving Ingersoll back to the line of scrimmage. So no gain. Second down and 10. Columbia Orthodontic scoreboard at the half. Kennewick 20, Kamayak in six. The second and 10, Geyer play action. Pumps, throws, deep ball again, looking for Coven Burke and he catches it into Hermiston territory down to the 35 yard line. Just another home run pitch and catch for 36 yards. And Southridge has got it down into Hermiston's end. Jaime Ramirez Ortega been put out on an island. And his help from the free safety, Ami Tui was laid over. And Burke does have a handful of inches on Jaime. I mean, he's listed at 5'11", Burke's listed at 6'2". Sadok again running to the left side, three yard gain down the middle of the field. At the 33 is where he's stopped by Neil Stasek. 9.44 left in quarter number three. And a 14 to seven lead for Hermiston. That looks so good in quarter number one is now pretty precarious as Southridge lines up for this second and seven. 
Sandberg, wing back to the left. In the backfield, Ingersoll again running left side. Ingersoll, buck sweep is sniffed out this time. Herbiston linebackers do a better job on that one. Another two yard gain. At the 31. Third and about six for the Saints. Third down, six to go. Another throw, right side, incomplete. Over the top of Coven Burke. Fourth down, six from the 31. In Hermiston territory. Southridge going to break the huddle under 10 seconds left on the play clock on this fourth down and six. Burke split out left. Play action. Geyer to throw. Time. Right side. Throws it again into the hands of Allen. I was alerted Allen was the one who caught that other one. So Allen's caught two on this drive. And now it looks right. The, the lime green shoes should be what stands out for the guy who got the offer to be preferred walk on at Eastern Washington earlier this week. It is first down yardage on a 16 yard gain. First down and 10 from the 15. 820 left in quarter number three. Wing back left. Geyer, hands off, Ingersoll, running to the left side, trying to get out to the edge. Justice Council has him bottled up. And he's finished off out on the wing. Helped out by Stasek. Still a three yard gain for Ingersoll. Bulldog defense just looks a little tired coming out of the locker room here. A couple of those big plays to Allen. You kind of wonder how is Hermiston going to, well, how they've made that adjustment. It looked like they had moved Nathan Welty over there, but Allen's off as the tight end left here on this second and seven. Guy to throw. Depot this time looking for Burke. Burke jumps up, catches it. Got in behind Welty. A miscommunication in the defense or just a hole in the defense as Welty and Tuya both were late there. Burke just ran essentially a go route to the end zone, little fade ball from Geyer. And a 12 yard touchdown pass has Southridge, a Jackson Williams kick away from tying this game. Jackson Williams out of Ben Redmond's hold. Snaps there, kicks up, it is low, and just sneaks it over. Not the prettiest extra point in the world, but doesn't really matter if it goes through those yellow posts. It's tied at 14, 7, 19 on the clock, third quarter action. Here at Hermiston High School, it's Bulldog football. You're listening to it on AM 1360, KOHU. Don't worry, you're fine. Just let it play out. Just let the ad keep running. It's just a test. Good. So that pass Yeah, yeah, you got it. No, no, but okay, yeah, you're right, because he caught the two on that drive. Okay. Okay. 
Chris Ortega. Lining up to keep it away from the Suns. Williams. Opening drive of the second half for the Southridge Suns, 80 yards, four minutes and 41 seconds. And Austin Geyer to Coven Burke. The 12-yard touchdown catch has us tied at 14. Left side return for Jaime Ramirez Ortega on another ground ball off of the foot of Williams. And Ramirez Ortega gets it out to the 36. It's a return of about 16. Left hash mark set, first down in 10. Isaac Corey. Takes the snap, hands off Ami Tuya, running out of the right side. The H back breaks across the midfield. He's at the 40. Ami Tuya running away. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Hammerston. 64 yards for Tuya on his longest play of the year. And Hammerston's back out in front. Quick strike response for Hermiston and Ami Tuya. Sixty-four yards and now out of the hole the land in Shalhanik, able on the Tory to get Hermiston a seven-point lead again. Kick is up. Kick is true. And Hermiston is back out in front, 21 to 14. It was a little bit more of a plotting first half. It would be interesting if this turned into a fireworks type second half driven by a couple of offenses that find their way. Well, it's another touchdown. It's the third one of the game for Hermiston and that means the next chapter bookstore is uh, going to add another book to our tally all season long every hermiston touchdown the next chapter bookstore will donate one children's book to hermiston's christmas express program the christmas express program we've supported for about a decade now with my toys for trays we do on the first double header of the basketball season we will still do that every three-pointer hermiston makes on that first night of the season we'll give a toy to christmas express when we get there but during the football season next chapter bookstore has committed to help out as well Next Chapter Bookstore in Hermiston. It's ready with your next great read. New books, all your favorite genres for all ages with new selections arriving daily. The Next Chapter Bookstore in Hermiston. 21-14, one play, 64 yards, and Hermiston's back out in front by seven. Abel Alatori to pound it away again. This one's going to be a knuckling ball off his foot, taken at the 10-yard line. And Sandberg moving to the middle field at 25. 25-30, breaks a tackle up to the 35-yard line. Javier Echeverria on the staff. So the Suns, victims of the quick strike from Abel Alatore. Update on the Columbia Orthodontic scoreboard. Kamaikin did get an extra point, but they trail Kennewick. Kennewick 20 to seven. Out in front, up at Lampson tonight. From the 35, first down and 10 for Southridge. Attacking left to right. Sloot running out to left side. Caught on the wing. Nice open field tackle made by Neil Stasek again. No gain for Sloot. Nothing lost either. But one of the keys was what can the linebackers do in open field tackling? If this wing tee is run correctly, it sets up the running back or the wing back at a one-on-one -on -one situation. And that was a great example of Stasek doing his job to a T. 6.20 left in quarter number three. Hermiston's lead is a touchdown. Ingersoll left, Sloot right. And Geyer from the shotgun throws a top jump ball right side incomplete. 
This one, Burke couldn't haul in against Aime Ramirez Ortega. It's kind of both coaching staffs staring each other down on that particular matchup. David Fiantete, the defensive coordinator, saying, Jaime, you can do this. You're going to go one-on-one -on -one with him all night long, and you're going to keep getting those one-on-one -on -one jump balls. Time it right, punch it out, whatever you have to do. Maybe at some point they'll bait Guy into under-throwing one. Hermanson does not intercept the ball very frequently. Third down and a 10. Left side runs, Lutz got it, and he's got a full head of steam. First down yards, gets pulled down at midfield. Check that, that was not Sloot, that was Sanook. Right up to the midfield stripe, first down. Just past the halfway point of a quarter number three. Geyer standing with his hands on his hips, waiting for Cliff Sandberg, the senior, to bring the play back in. And Ingersoll will come out. First down and 10. Burke is wide to the left side. They really haven't thrown when he's on the short side of the field. And there you go. Throw over to Burke. He dropped it. A little bit low, but Burke had it hit his hands right at his right hip and wasn't able to pull it in. So it's a drop and an incompletion, second and ten. Second and ten to the Suns. The tough thing for Hermiston is as the second and third quarter have progressed and Southridge has gotten a bit more comfortable with their doing offensively tonight. Is Hermiston has got Southridge in these second and third and long situations. They haven't been able to capitalize on it. Second down. Sloot on the sweep out to the left side. Hit out in the open field wide to the left again. It's Stasic with the tackle. Sloot does gain a yard. No game. Just a little bit of Correction, chipping back and forth. At the end of that play, line judge on the far side kind of didn't do a ton, just walked a little bit towards everybody. It was all barking at each other. And told them to go back to their respective sides for the next play. Third down. Sloop probably ends up with two on that play. Third and about eight from Hermiston's 48. Geyer, play action. Deep ball over the middle. And he throws the jump ball to Allen. Allen pinballs off of a defender and catches it at the 30-yard line. 18-yard gain. With the reception. And it's another first down for Southridge. They're into Hermiston territory with 4.20 left in the third quarter. Down by a touchdown. Hermiston has not had an answer for the 6-6 tight end Gavin Allen here in this quarter. First down 10 from the 30. Guy under center. Dive play and right into the wall. Sadook stood up after a yard gain. That's what Hermiston's been able to key on. Tanner McCoy and Maxi Garte in the middle. Sure. The twin tackles have been very difficult for anything inside. Michael Ingersoll bring in the next play. Uh, he replaces Cliff Sandberg. Sadek will be in the fullback position. Sloot wing back right. Ingersoll out to the left. Burke is wide right this time. Flags come out and Sloot started to move before the snap to Geyer. False start penalty will move Southridge back five yards. Even though it's second and long, it's no reason not to talk about it here. The mentality of Hermiston's defense is they are going to have to stop a fourth down play at this point in the drive. So second and 15, you still got to make a couple more stops. Unless one of these plays ends up in a big loss. Same setup. 
And now a pause as Matt Johnson and Southridge want to call a timeout. With 3.09 left in the third quarter, the Bulldogs 21 and the Southridge Suns 14. Let's look ahead with Layuna to next week for Southridge. This is actually a three-game road trip for them. They're on the road each of the next three weeks. And none of those are, quote, on the road, but they're at Lampson Stadium. Here tonight for homecoming. Go to Burleski next Friday night for Walla Walla. And then their non-conference is on the 6th of October when they go to Lewis and Clark. Southridge also just a weird schedule when you look at it from 30,000 feet. First two weeks of the season, they play on Saturday. They will play just like Hermiston on Thursday, October 12th. I don't think it's intentional to avoid playing on Friday the 13th, but why not? Might as well. And they also finish the season, at least the regular season, on Thursday, October 26th at Hanford. Two more home games for the Suns. They'll get there on that Thursday, the 12th, against Chiawana at home. And then Kennewick, who right now looks like they are the world beater team to beat with a two score lead against Kamaiakin. Out of the timeout, second down and 15. Geyer to throw. Straight drop, sets up. Now he'll roll out of the pocket. Left throw on the run. A overthrow and ball. Flag comes out, intercepted by Young. That ball sailed way over the head of any intended receiver, and Young, who was behind everybody, intercepted it. Pass interference against Hermiston is the indication. Kellen Young had that thing picked off, but the determination was that that scrum of people about seven yards in front of Young where the ball sailed well over their heads. Not yet. Now a flag out from the Hermiston sideline. And this is going to be the linesman that was on the Hermiston side. An unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against the Hermiston sideline. David Faitete palms out with the guy. He wants an explanation. So half the distance from the 20 means it's a 15-yard penalty and then a 10-yard penalty. And it wasn't the coach. I'm almost positive it wasn't the coach. In fact, I think it was a, I kind of assume it was a player. The weird thing about it, the linesman was standing about 40 yards behind where the play was gonna get marched off to. He was standing just on the sideline, kind of in the middle of the pack, and then the flag flew. First down and goal, just inside the 10. And a hand up, up the middle, a broken tackle, Sanook at the goal line, short. A nine yard run, 2.43 left in the third quarter. Bulldogs trying to preserve a one touchdown lead, 25 yards of penalties here on one play. Have got Southridge knocking on the door. Correction, the last tackle was Tom Echevedo. left side run. Ugarte catches him in the backfield. It's a loss of a yard back to the two. That time, C.U. Sepeni on the stop for the Bulldogs. C.U. Sepeni helps out Ugarte, who got the initial contact. Third down and goal. Two more stops need to be made. Geyer will take the play to the huddle. Southridge has also been putting on a pretty advanced class in taking time down here. Sloot wing back right. Sandberg running to the right side. Got a full head of steam. He's into the end zone from two yards out for the score. Sandberg on Southridge. 
Extra point to tie it with a minute 35 left in quarter number three. Cliff Sandberg was in the league's top 10 list for all-purpose yards with 267 coming in. It's his fifth carry tonight, just 11 yards on the ground, but missed extra point wide to the right. That time Jackson Williams scooped under it and pushed it as well. And Hermiston will lead 21 to 20 with a minute 35 remaining in the third quarter when we return to Hermiston High School and AM 1360 KOHU. And remind me that we have a last smartphone here in the booth. If the person who believes they last it can tell us the color and the case of the phone, we'll be happy to return it to your possession. Abel Alatori and Nathan Welty are back deep to return. It's another squibbed kick. Bounding ball. And Alatori will be the one who takes it. Coming out to the left side at the 25. And he is spun out of bounds. Just across the 30. Into his own sideline at about the 33-yard line. Hermiston 21. Southridge 20. Jackson Williams missed extra point. The difference with a minute 29 remaining in the third quarter. Hermes will start on the 32. They've only won, run one play in the third quarter. It was a 64 yard run to Ami Tuya. He's to the right of Isaac Corey. And a pause before the snap. A flag out on the far sideline. Indicated against Southridge. The Suns will get another offside penalty. And that time they're just lined up offsides. Move the ball up to the 37 yard line in Hermiston territory. Isaac Corey checks over to the sidelines. They will change the play slightly. Tuya will move to Corey's left shoulder. Larson, the deep man. Play action to him. Quick throw near side. Justice counts on the screen. Council's got big blocks in front of him. Down the near sideline. 35 30, 25 20. One man to beat at the 15. He is shoved out of bounds. Jackson Williams makes the saving tackle and pushes him out at the five yard line. However, Where is the flag? Down here in front of the Hermiston bench. It's nine yards downfield at the 46 yard line. There still hasn't been an indication a holding penalty on Hermiston. That one will be an interesting one to look at on film because that sure looked like just serving out a bunch of flapjacks. That was a pancake block. Ends up being a 10 yard gain for council and then a 10 yard penalty. So it's back to where they were essentially. 
Fake it, throw it over there again. They'll try Council again. This time it is bobbled up better by Southridge, and Council's only going to get to the 38 yard line. Gaining two yards and another one of those screen plays. Minute left in the third quarter. Hermiston 21, Southridge 20 on homecoming night at Hermiston High. Larson to the left of Corey, fake to him. Corey, straight drop. Throw over the middle. Has Bledsoe. Bledsoe across the midfield stripe. Breaks a tackle. Spun around by Ingersoll and stopped at the 41-yard line into Southridge territory, a 22-yard gain. Clock is paused while they move the chains. 36 seconds left in the third quarter. Nathan Welty alone to the left. Corey wants to go quick. We'll hand off to Larson. Larson up the middle. Tripped. A diving play by Geyer, the linebacker, at Larson's shoe tops. Stops him after a six-yard gain. Hermison's going so quick. Oh, they made it a five-yard gain. Ooh, that was a bad spot. That's crazy. The, the officials were so far behind that play as quickly as Hermiston was moving, too. Second down and six from the 30 70 yard line. Corey slaps his hands together. Straight drop. Full blitz coming. He'll step up around it. Last play of the quarter. Corey tripped up, gets back to the line of scrimmage, coming out to the near side. Finished off by Saduk. And it's the fourth quarter with Hermiston up 21 to 20 when we return to Hermiston High School. It's Bulldog football on AM 1360 KOHU. We'd like to announce our 50-50 winner at this time. Winning the prize of $338 is winning ticket number of 777-0755. And it's a red ticket, 777-0755. Please collect your earnings down by the east side of the grass. We open the fourth quarter, Hermiston with the ball, facing a third down and five at the Southridge 36 yard line. Hermiston 21, Southridge 20, homecoming night at Hermiston High School. Two receivers each way for Isaac Corey, with Larson to his left. He will fake a little screen up the middle, caught by Larson, pulled down from behind, just short of the 30 yard line. Sandberg makes the stop. It was enough yardage for a first down, so give six to Larson on the little screen pass. Ben is shaken up on the play. And so Ami Tui has to race out there to replace Larson, who was tackled awkwardly by Sandberg. First down and 10 at the 30-yard line. Opening seconds of quarter number four. Bulldogs would like to extend their one-point lead. Corey going for everything. Council's behind everybody. Dropped at the end zone. It was Ramirez Ortega. Great read by Isaac. If there's just a little bit more air under that ball, that's probably a touchdown. Instead, second down and 10. Left hash mark just short of the 30 yard line. Landon Shohanek is the receiver right. Austin Bledsoe is in the slot that way. Nathan Welty, the short side of the field left. Corey snaps it, hands off. It's Tui up the middle. Tui's first carry since the 64 yard touchdown. And he'll get two yards to the 29. Some let's go Bulldog chants starting. Actually, some of the elementary students down in front 
trying to start that champ. Third down and eight. Low snap. Corey pulls it into his knees. He's being blitzed by Sandberg, trying to run away from him. Does evade long enough. Near sideline will throw way down the field. Coming back. Bledsoe's got it. Just outside the 15. Turns and gets inside the 15. Down to the 12 yard line. 18 yard gain. 19 yard gain to Bledsoe. Isaac Corey ran about 40 yards on the play before he threw it about 40 yards downfield. Hermiston moving quick, 10.45 of the clock. The snap to Corey. He'll roll out to the left side. Got protection there from Tuya. Throws it towards the sideline. Catch. Ramirez Ortega comes back into the uh, field and makes it inside the five down to the two is where he's out of bounds. Gain of nine. Hermiston wants to go as fast as they possibly can, up 21 to 20, a minute and a half into the quarter. Ramirez Ortega with that last catch. Corey's going to keep it running. Left the seas part for him into the end zone. Touchdown, Bulldogs! That was... Ultra fast tempo. Corey finishes it off on a two yard rush. His sixth rushing touchdown of the season. This one's important to make it eight. Abel Alatori, perfect tonight on extra points. This one is as well. And Hermiston's lead is eight in the opening minutes of the fourth quarter. 10.22 left in quarter number four. And Isaac Corey is on the board with the two yard rushing touchdown. The question now is pretty simple. It's a question of Hermiston's defense. Have they found a way to get a second half stop of the Southridge Suns. Most recent update from Lampson on the Columbia Orthodontics uh, scoreboard. Final minutes of the third quarter. Kennewick preserving the 20 to seven lead and start of the fourth quarter just a bit ago. Echo Prairie City, Echo was down 33 to 26 in the six man game. So Abel Alatori kicking back towards the high school as Southridge is attacking right to left as they get ready to return this in the fourth quarter. Cliff Sandberg is the returner to the right. He's back about the 70 yard line right hash mark. At the left hash mark, Ted Gillespie. He has seen nothing come his way on kickoffs tonight. This is again Sandberg's direction. High kick drives him to the four. Sandberg up the middle of the field. 15 out to the right at the 20. Got around McCammy. Stops and caught. Sandberg on the turn. It's a heel pick catch for Alex Garcia. And 10-16 on the clock, the Suns back on offense, down 28 to 20. The successes have included focusing on Gavin Allen, the 6-6 tight end in the passing game, and getting stuff out on the wings. Allen will be set up left. Sandberg behind him at the wing back spot. Fake to Sloot, looking to throw. Geyer over the middle, wide open Allen. Allen across the 40, caught from behind. Tripped up at the 45. That was the easiest catch he's had of the night. Ran into wide open space. And gains 23 yards, another first down for the Suns. Clock spinning, two minutes gone in quarter number four. Suns facing an eight point deficit. They're looking for win number one this year. The start of three road games in a row. 
Burke is the split end to the right. Geyer looking to throw. He slipped as he tried to get out into his rollout and is dropped back at the 40-yard line. Robbie Akers gets him for the sack, and it's a loss of five. We had some light rain midweek. As it gets later in the evening, the turf does start to build up a little bit of moisture on it here as we get. We are now only a few hours away from officially fall. And Geyer lost his footing. Play action again. Geyer evades a diving attempt by Akers. Throws incomplete. Another pass play attempt on second and long brings up third down and long. Clock is paused with 8.59 left in quarter number four. Southridge has had very good success on third down and long situations. Especially in the second half. Presumably Geyer to throw. Allen is the tight end left. Burke is the split end right. Play action. Geyer straight drop will throw a jump ball. Allen's way. He catches it as he's falling down. Flag out. As Allen gets it up to the 40, it's a 20 yard pitching catch. Flag on the play. And that was in a triple coverage. Now the indication is pass interference on Allen. The penalty against Southridge. It wasn't a spot foul though. It should be back from the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they will march it from the 40 and push Southridge even further back. Maxi Garte will switch on for Tanner McCoy. As the Bulldogs look to rush on what will be third and very long with 8.52 left in the fourth. 10 yard penalty, brings it back to the 30. Third down and 25. Really, what do you have in the playbook other than throw it up to Gavin Allen for a jump ball? Throw it up to Govan Burke for a jump ball. Allen's side in left, Burke is wide right. In motion, Sandberg. It's a flip to Sandberg. He will throw it down the field, incomplete. Flags out everywhere. Sandberg had thrown it off line by like nine yards to the left of where the attended receiver was on the halfback pass that wasn't anywhere close, and it's gonna end up working out for the Suns. Although the conversation went back over to the line judge on the Southridge side, who was standing way back by the down marker. It is pass interference against Hermiston. So now 15 yards forward means it's third down and 10 from the 45. There is a little bit of a comedy of errors to this whole thing that all Southridge can do on these long down situations is throw jump balls up into the air. And Hermiston just hasn't found the correct way to defend it. They're just giving up six, seven inches. Third and 10 at the 45. They could actually run this normal. Play action, Geyer straight drop. Will throw, jump ball. Allen is open again. And he's driven out of bounds by Justice Council into Hermiston territory right around the 30. They'll give him the 20, generously give him the 28 yard line. 22 yards gained, 840 left. Southridge has it down into Hermiston territory. 28 to 20. 
And for somebody who doesn't like to do play-by-play -play of wing T because it's just difficult to follow, I far prefer them in a normal situation than this ridiculous jump ball stuff. Although if you're Southridge, why would you change right now? Just keep throwing the ball up into the air. Guy your hands off, sweep play coming to the left, Slute trying to get out to the edge. Caught by Welty and taken out of bounds into the Hermiston bench at the 22-yard uh, line. 70-yard gain. Slute on the carry. Aiden Slute, the senior, getting out. On the stop for the Bulldogs. So it's left hash mark, second down and three. At the 21, out of bounds, so the clock is paused with 8.31 remaining. Although now the White Hat wants to wind it. So the clock is running. Second down and a three. Play action. Geyer to throw. Right side. A diving play out on the wing is pulled in by Sloot up to the 15-yard line. So Sloot becomes just the third receiver to catch a pass tonight from Geyer. Just a modest seven yards gained. And first down and 10 at the 15. The Suns down by eight. Eight minutes left in the fourth. Geyer under center on this drive, or at least this play, hands off. Coming out to the left, Sloot. Flag out as he gets planted by Neil Stasek at the 11. Flag on the play. Stasek with the Flags in a couple of different spots on this play. Holding indicated against Southridge. So two officials saw the same holding, presumably. And the Suns are moving back to the 25 on that 10-yard penalty. Southridge has dominated time of possession here in the second half especially. Hermiston's defense has been on the field for a long time. That holding penalty really could help. It's a dig deep moment here. Try to get off the field. Sandberg wing back to the left. Two behind Geyers. He's under center. Play action. Geyer to throw. Will throw a deep ball over the middle. Too far for Burke. Incomplete. Again, I'm a Ramirez Ortega in the coverage. So now second down and 20 to go from the 25. And I guess one of the other pieces to this is in these passing down situations, now the onus is really on Hermiston to get pressure on Geyer. Get to the quarterback if you can. Geyer hands off, right side for Sadook. Sadook going outside the numbers. He's tripped up at the 19 yard line. Picks up six. Third down and 14. Right ash mark at the 19 yard line. Under seven minutes remaining in an eight-point ball game. Hermiston with the advantage on their homecoming night. Everybody will be tight to the formation. Double tights on third down and 14. Geyer puts Sandberg in motion. Flag comes out from the near sideline. And the Suns are going backwards. Hermiston makes some changes on the defensive line as the five yards are marched off against Southridge to the 24. Third down and 19. It's not really gonna be hard to find the primary target. It's the 6'6 guy in the lime green shoes. I mean, the second target's the sophomore who's 6'2". That's Burke, he's wide right. 
Those lime green shoes are on the line at the tight end left. Third and 19. Kyer play action. Pressured. Will throw near sideline. On the run, an open field tackle made by Landon Shalhanik of Michael Ingersoll at the 20-yard line. Gain of four, but no more. And fourth down and 15 facing the Suns. Halfway point of the fourth quarter, they're down 28 to 20. Offense stays on the field. Left hash mark, Geyer in the shotgun on this play. Wants to roll right. Jump ball thrown up over Burke, bobbled. Knocked away by Ramirez Ortegas. Burke was bobbling it with his right hand. Hyman was able to finally slap it out. The incompletion, the turnover on downs, and the Bulldogs have the ball with the lead. That's a turnover on downs. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. Hermiston will take it on the 20. Five minutes and 34 seconds remaining. Southridge has two of their three timeouts left. 28 to 20. Hermiston has not just had the ball very much offensively. Isaac Corey will go with two in the backfield. Ramirez Ortega moves from the right side out to the slot left. Tuya to left shoulder and Larson the deep man. It's Tuya again. Same play he scored from 64 yards out. Big run right side. Sandberg grabs him at the waist and stops his forward progress after eight yards up to the 29. It's that each back hesitation play. They've had a couple of big ones on it. Now second down and one. Larson is behind Corey. Fake it, option play left. Corey's got to get outside. Larson will become a blocker. Corey to the edge. Will put his shoulder down and get close to the sticks. Mark just short of the 30 yard line, so not enough to move the chains. Third down and less than a yard. Under five minutes remaining. Hermanson doesn't have to go score, but it doesn't hurt as Southridge is playing chase down by eight. Larson to the left of Corey. Fake to him. Corey again running left. There was a lot of pressure out there on the edge. Corey's now out to the far sideline. Bounces off of a tackler. He stepped out of bounds about the 45 as he handed out a forearm shiver as well to a safety. Where do they say he's out? They say he's out at the 41. So it's an 11 yard gain for Isaac. And it does move the chains. But stops the clock with 448. Corey surveys the scene. Back to his right. Looking to throw. Rolling left. Now looks back to his left side. He's under pressure. Sacked and dropped back at the 25 yard line. David Sanook came and got him, and immediately Southridge wants a timeout after the big play. Four thirty-one. Do they want a timeout? No holding is called against Hermiston. And the Suns don't want it. They will take the sack. And the loss of 16 yards by Isaac back to the 25. Because that's a loss of a down. And it becomes second down in 26. This is a clock management situation here. Why is this one start? Yeah, this clock is supposed to wind, and Isaac should take as much time as he can. He's got 14 on the play clock. 
He starts to gesture with his hand, signaling some type of change. Southard showing a bunch of blitz on his backside. They will bring it. Isaac throws, hit as he throws. Deep ball down the field for Shalhanek coming back. He is hit as the defender came through Landon. He smartly slowed up, tried to get the ball, actually got his hands on it. And Jackson Williams is going to get called for pass interference, which will get Hermiston back to the original line of scrimmage after the 15-yard penalty. Pass interference on the defense is the signal. There's no other way to put it, sports fans. This kind has become an ugly one. Just a plethora of penalties here in the second half. And a lot of it is just two secondaries that have not had any answers to the other team's passing game. And I mean, frankly, on the Hermiston side of things, you're dealing with a very limited passing game in what Southridge is doing, but they just haven't had an answer to height. So it moves it up to the 40. The tail of the ball is just across the 40 yard line with 408 left in the fourth quarter. Eight point Hermiston lead, second down and call it 11. Blitz shown up the middle. It's a run play. Lashen breaks across the midfield shot. He's got a block 30, 25, 20. Ben is going to the end zone for the score. Touchdown, Hermiston, a 60 yard run. Ben Larson beat the run blitz and the Bulldogs have a two score lead again. There was all sorts of pressure being shown by Southridge as they had eight, nine guys in the box. And as soon as Ben broke out to the next level, this is the thing that jumps out to every team that's scouting Hermiston, is there is so much speed in so many different places. And this time it was Larson into the end zone for the second time tonight. Abel Alatori to add the extra point, make it a 15-point game. High snap, pulled down by Shalonic, kicked through by Abel. 35 to 20 with 355 left. There's a cushion now. Is there a stop coming after that? Hermiston, this game opened with an Austin Bledsoe 45-yard touchdown reception from Isaac Corey. Ben Larson added his first touchdown in the final minute of the first quarter. And it really did kind of feel like, oh boy, this Hermiston team is really ready to put on a show. And Southridge just, they settled themselves in. They were methodical. They never panicked. And they clawed their way back. And they got it to within a touchdown going into the locker room. And... There have been mistakes on both sides for sure. Both of these teams have improvement needed. But for Hermiston, what they're poised for is they're 355 away from another win over a 3A team. Already Walla Walla last week. If they can pick this one up as well, then it's them and Kennewick for the top 3A team. And the second team, yeah, might finish like they're not distracted by the different pieces that are around homecoming they want to win the ball game they are closer to it up 35 to 20 short high kick take it at the 15 by Sandberg Sandberg at the 25 and that's where he runs into a pile of black shirts 15 yard return on a shorter kick from Abel Alatori well, 349 left in the fourth quarter a team that is not designed to catch up from down. It's got to go to the passing game. At the 25, first down and 10. Burke is out to the left side. Tight end right, Geyer, will straight drop. Throw back over to the right side. Wide open, Sandberg. He's in the open field with Jaime Ramirez Ortega. Jaime does well to shove him out of bounds into the Southridge bench at the 39 after a 14-yard gain.
Out of bounds, so the clock pauses with 341. Southridge has two timeouts. They got to get two scores out of this deal. Geyer again to throw. Right side toss to the sideline. Has it to Allen. The over-the-shoulder catch. He's out to the Hermiston 39-yard line. That was a cool 22-yard pitching catch to Gavin Allen, who's having a career night. Bulldogs just not getting a lot of pressure on the quarterback. A lot of it's with three-man rushes. First down and 10 at the Hermiston 39. Geyer's throwing again. They bring five. Geyer throws it over right side. Wheel route Sandberg catches it again. Driven out of bounds at the 33 into the Southridge bench after a 70-yard gain. Kellen Allen was the one who comes over and makes the coverage. 317 left. Bulldogs 35, Suns 20. This Hermiston defense, they've got this good advantage of 15 points to play with, but they have spent a lot of time on the field tonight. This is where really comes into play for Hermiston that this year they have really put an emphasis on extra guys rotating, especially on the defensive side. The officials have decided they want the clock to be put back at 325. So 325 instead of 317. That first week, David Fitete told us they had 34 different guys take defensive snaps. They've run out a bundle tonight. Second down and a four. Geyer, deep ball. Over everybody incomplete, looking for Sloot. Some concern behind the play as Southridge has a man down. And it's the big man. Carson Condy, an all-league guy, a three-sport athlete at Southridge. Pat Johnson said, look, he's going to get interest because he's 6'5", 290 from football programs. Probably track and field at the college level. He is the unanswerable question when you talk about basketball is every once in a while they throw him out there and he's like 10 points because nobody for Hermes can stop 6'5", 290. Nathan Ralty, sack on Geyer on third down, the play action. Ralty on the corner, blitz gets to Geyer, hammers him from behind. And Geyer is slow to get up. He was blindsided. Ralty timed it just right. It was a perfectly red play by Nathan Welty. A flag comes out afterwards. Well after. It will be personal foul is indicated against Hermiston. A personal foul after Geyer lost eight yards on the sack. Nathan Welty squared Austin Geyer up in the back. That was a sack. It was clean. It was a head up tackle. It knocked the wind out of Geyer. And David Faitete wants a tie. He wants an explanation. 3.06 left in the fourth quarter. Hermiston 35, Southridge 20. We'll take it as well. Back in 60 on AM 1360, KOHU.
The penalty is going to move the ball all the way up to the 17-yard line. First down and 10 for Southridge. 35-20 to 20 is the score. Handoff left side. Slute is tackled in the backfield for a loss of two. Southridge did have to put Cooper Hunkenpiller in the sophomore for a play to hand that ball off because they did have to stop the game for the Geyer injury. Second down and 11, Geyer to throw, rolling left, will throw, jump ball incomplete, too tall for Allen. And in that timeout, watching David Faitete plead his case with the officiating crew, that was the other thing, it was, Welty didn't even go and land on top of Geyer. Welty saw how clean it was, and he just shoved him in the back and kind of ran past him. He didn't land on him. He didn't hit him above the shoulder pads into the helmet area. And David Vitete, you could tell the gesturing. He got the official to admit, no, it was, act I mean, the official accidentally admitted that, Exactly what David wanted to say, I think, is what the gesture and I read was. And David's like, well, then that can't be a penalty. But the penalty stayed, and now we're third down and 11 from the 20. Geyer's in a shotgun. Three, 235 left. Geyer to throw. Right side jump ball, and a flag comes out as it's poked away from Burke. And Jaime Ramirez Ortega saying, what am I supposed to do? We're both hooked up with each other. It's hand fighting both ways. I mean, I think Jaime is actually committing the penalty there. But that's what he's saying. He's like, I don't, what am I supposed to do? If he's allowed to put his hands on me and I can't put my hands on him at all, then it's completely unfair. It's a half the distance of goal penalty, so that pass interference is 10. Again, not an automatic first down in high school, so third down and three from the 10. 2.29 left in the fourth quarter. It is still 35 to 20. Hermiston's still playing with the two score lead. Southridge actually can run a traditional wing T play here if they would like. They will put Sandberg in motion. Play action to throw. Back of the end zone. Under throw. Back. Coming back. Joe Haddock picks it off. He's got the interception, and Hermiston's going to get a win. Austin Geyer has not had an underthrown ball tonight until that one. And Shalhanik was able to make the break. He made the catch as he dove and slid down to the ground right at top of the L in the end zone where it says Bulldogs. And on homecoming night, Hermiston is 222 away from a win, their third of the season. Two twenty-two, two timeouts for Southridge. We're probably not done with shenanigans yet, but thirty-five to twenty, it's pretty darn comfortable. Larson will be to the right shoulder of Isaac Corey on first down and ten from the twenty. Corey will keep it running left side as they fake the fly sweep. Corey out to the edge, and he's shoved out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Seven-yard gain for Isaac. Out of bounds does mean that the clock spawns with 2.14 left. I think if Sonny was here, he'd he'd be wanting some good old-fashioned inside zone between the tackles. This time they will pass it to Council on that sweep play, and Southridge defends it well. No gain as Sandberg just stepped right into the area where Council was coming on that sweep. So no gain on the quick pass to Council, and it's third down and three. Corey, play action, 
Little screen play, Stasek's hit in the backfield. Geyer's the one who makes the stop at the 25. And Southridge will stop the clock with a minute 33 left in the fourth quarter, and Hermison's got fourth down and five. Columbia Orthodontics scoreboard. Hefter Mustangs down against Lost River down at the Morrow County Fairgrounds. 30 to six, the final tally in that one. About 90 seconds or so left at Lampson Stadium. And Kennewick has not found the end zone in the second half. They haven't found the uprights in the second half, but they have found themselves still with a lead. 20 to 14, Kamayak in driving. Presumably looking for the game winning drive. Kennewick interception. Kennewick with the ball, exactly 90 seconds remaining. And the Lions look like they're on the way to 4-0. Kennewick is number 10 in the WIAA's 3A RPI. They're gonna be the only perfect team in the Mid-Columbia Conference. They're not just the number one 3A team, they are gonna be the number one team in the MCC. Hermiston's RPI is 40 coming into the week. So, while this puts them in a very good spot to get into the round of 32, right now they are looking at a very difficult road trip if we were to end now, but luckily there's still a month and a half left. Max Shalhanek punts out of bounds into the Southridge bench. It is not a well-kicked ball. Angled out and just angled out at the 35. So the punt only goes for about 12 yards. The Suns have a timeout remaining. Down 35 to 20 with a minute 28 left in regulation. Landon Shalonic got an interception in the last Suns drive. Allen is wide to the left side. Geyer in the pistol set. Two receiver options right as well. He looks that way, he throws that way, completes it to Burke. Tight ropes the sideline. He's out at the 27, an eight yard gain. If you're defending as Hermiston, everything's got to be to the sidelines. They really can't go over the middle. The 27, Geyer. Straight drop, Hermiston rushes three. Geyer to the far sideline, throws out of bounds. An incompletion. Minute 18 left, third down and short. You get the first down, the clock stops long enough to get the chains moved. Now this is a Southridge team. They are primarily a huddle it up, take time in between plays. It's a very difficult ask for anybody to come back from 15 down to the final minute and a half. Run play will get the first down yardage up to the 20. Now the question is going to be, did they have two plays called there? It doesn't look like it is. Southridge is getting set to huddle again with first down and 10 from the 20 on the run play for Sanook. It gained him seven. Southridge will take their, they'll take their last timeout. So first down and 10 from the 20, a minute 11, 12 left in the fourth quarter. 35 to 20 is the score. I would think if you're David Faitete, the conversation with guys right now is everything essentially has to be to the end zone. Because the Suns have to score and they have to get the ball back. And if you score right now, you're thinking two point conversion as well. And on the Southridge sideline across from us, away from everybody else. 
Marcos Minivar. And I want to say, in the interest of full disclosure, I talked to three different Southridge people, and they all kind of had this wry smile on their face when they said, yeah, no, th th that's right. With the last name of the junior. Now, he is the onside kick specialist, and he's over there practicing onside kicks with Quinton Ellison. Guy to throw. They got to get it there first. Drop by Allen. As Ami Tuya ends up somersaulting over him. Those two turn, slap hands. And then Allen will come get the ball and get it to the uh, Southridge ball boy. He'll come back to the huddle. So that one would have been interesting because it wouldn't have got him in. And Southridge is out of timeouts. So to get Renavar the chance to try this onside kick that he's practicing over and over again behind the Southridge bench, they got to get into the end zone first. Second down and 10 from the 20. Geyer, quick toss, right side. Incomplete, too far for Burke. He again in that one-on-one -on -one with Ramirez Ortega. Third down and 10 to go. Geyer to throw. He will step up. Now he's going to run out to the left side. He's got open space there. 15 towards the 10. He reaches for it. Didn't get there. Nine-yard scramble for Geyer. Fourth down and one. Fifty-four seconds remaining, fourth down and one. By the way, there is a way to just end this thing. Get the stop on fourth and one. Ingersoll wing back right, Sandberg to the left. Geyer goes under center. Play stopped with a flag out for the far sideline. Hermiston's offsides, so. There was a way to stop it. Instead, it's a first down. First down and goal from the six for the Suns. Southridge will not go quietly into the night. And Hermiston will not put them away. It's so close to a homecoming victory. It's still 35 to 20. But just be more comfortable in victory formation. Geyer, play action. Lobs it left corner, jump ball. Allen pushes off, flag comes out as he was against Council. And Allen is gonna get called for the offensive pass interference. Pushing off to create the space. It is offensive pass interference, so they go backwards. And now for the Suns, even the first touchdown becomes pretty difficult. 15 yards back to the 21. Still first down and goal. 47 seconds left. They're going to need every single little thing to line up. Coven Burke is the split end wide to the right side. Allen is tight end left. Geyer shotgun rolling right. 
Pressured that way, Geyer directing traffic, will set up and throw back behind him. Picked off by Shalonik again in the end zone. He's still on his feet, running to the near sideline. Everybody on the Hermiston coach say slide and get down. He will, it'll be a touchback, but he ran off a few more seconds on the clock with 30 seconds, six seconds remaining. Landon Shalonik's second interception of the quarter will allow Hermiston to finally line up in victory for Formation and confirm the homecoming win over the Southridge Suns. There were points where it looked like this was going to be a clear and easy win. It's not going to be the case. I asked Matt Johnson, are we rivals? I think probably we are. And it's a homecoming win, and it's a second 3A win, and Hermiston is now four and one. Excuse me, three and one on the season. And that should do. As the knee is taken, it will be the last one Hermiston needs, and the teams can head to midfield to line up for handshakes. What a comeback by Southridge. What a pull away in the end by Hermiston. A couple of huge run plays tonight. Ben Larson, a 40-yarder. Amituya, a 